To me, the most amazing factor about Rocket League as a game is the fact that it's similar to soccer or football, which I already enjoy, except it's even more complex because it adds an entire new dimension with the ability to fly. And within that new dimension comes a whole new world of creativity, speed, and mechanics to master. In this video, I'm going to lay out a timeline of aerial skills to work on from complete beginner to the highest level of gameplay. You'll be able to determine where you are currently on that timeline and follow it the rest of the way until you have complete mechanical freedom. But real quick, just gotta be out here sponsoring myself because I wanna let you guys know about my own Rocket League course on Gamers Ready. It's called The Ultimate Guide to Teamwork in Rocket League. And I've been working on it for the past eight or nine months because I wanted to put as much value in it as possible. So if you want to get better at Rocket League, this is for you. There are a ton of topics in there that I would never get to cover in a YouTube video because most people don't find them all that entertaining. So that being said, I know not all of you watching this are super serious about getting better at Rocket League, but for those of you that are, this is the best resource out there for you. And I'm not just saying that, I truly do believe it. It's extremely useful no matter what rank you are because most of these concepts don't usually get covered anywhere publicly. I'm sure once you take this course, you'll be impressed by how much you didn't actually know about this game already, even if you've been playing for years. So if you're interested, there's a link at the top of the description and there's more info on the main page there. And be sure to use code WAITIN at checkout for 20% off. But anyway, that's about it. Let's jump right back in with how to master aerials. To master aerials, I've created a timeline to help you go from not knowing how to do one at all to mastering them completely from any awkward position. This timeline is broken up into five levels. Obviously, not all of you watching will be at the exact same level, so it'll be your job to determine what level you're at and then continue on to improve your aerials down the timeline from there. To begin, I'll start by explaining how a fast aerial is performed and then I'll move us down the timeline eventually working our way up to mastering them from every angle with the maximum amount of speed. The process of learning an aerial is pretty simple, but there's many ways to go about it. In short, the ultimate goal for what you should be eventually trying to learn is what's called a fast aerial. A fast aerial is performed by jumping once, leaning back, stop leaning back, jumping again, and continue leaning back, all while boosting the whole way through it. It looks like this in real time. A common mistake people run into with this is they'll only tap the jump button instead of holding it down. This doesn't get you in the air as fast because you go higher when you hold down your jumps. I even see grand champions with this problem, and it's a really hard habit to break, so make sure you do it right when you're first learning it. You should be holding down your jumps to go as high as possible. Now, I don't recommend just jumping right in and trying to do the fast aerial without any experience. It can be discouraging when you realize how difficult it is to get the motion down. So instead, I recommend learning to just double jump and then lean back and boost so you can get used to controlling your car in the air at all. Once that becomes easy, you can try learning the fast aerial so you'll be boosting through the aerial the whole time and leaning back in between your jumps. Something people are often confused about with fast aerials is the fact that you actually do need to press multiple buttons with your thumb in order to perform it. On a PlayStation controller, the default boost button is circle and the default jump button is X. Meaning that in order to press both at the same time, you kind of have to rock your thumb between the two buttons. It's a movement that I've never had to get used to in any other game, but for Rocket League, it's just something that you've got to learn. For those that don't learn this movement, they either never learn how to do a fast aerial and stay down in platinum, or they just rebind their boost button to something else so they can press boost with a different finger. There's nothing wrong with doing this. There are many pros that choose to rebind their boost button to a bumper, but it's just not as common as choosing to keep it default. Most players just choose to learn how to rock their thumb between the buttons. So even if it's awkward at first, it is something that you will get used to over time as long as you stay patient with it. For this level 1 training pack, since it's only 5 shots and they're all very basic aerials that are stationary in the air, you should make sure that you can fast aerial straight into the ball with your nose on all 5 shots without fail. If you can't do it yet, just keep practicing until you can. Once you can do it, you're ready to move on to level 2. Now that you have the general motion down for how to fast aerial, it's time to start reading the ball as it's flying through the air. For the level 2 training pack, it's basically the same as level 1, but the ball is moving so it requires you to read the trajectory. These are all still very basic aerials that don't require much mechanics to perform. In fact, the ball is so low that you're probably capable of single jumping and then flipping into the ball on some of these, but make sure you don't do that even when you can, because we're trying to learn how to aerial here. So treat these 10 shots exactly the same as you did for the level 1 pack. Fast aerial straight into it and smack it in with your nose. 
If you hit it with the side or top of your car, that doesn't count. You may get lucky and tap it right in a few times with that, but as you climb the ranks, you'll need to start relying on shot placement and power more, and it's going to be much easier to place your shots specifically where you want them if you're hitting it with your nose every single time. So make sure on these that you hit it with your front, even if it's harder for you that way. A good rule I like to use to determine if I got the touch right is by looking at how my car reacts to the touch. If my car bounces off in a way and my front is no longer pointing forward, that means I did it wrong. But if my nose stays mostly solid through the touch the whole time, that's how I know I did it right. Also, there shouldn't be any air roll necessary, so don't try doing these while spinning. Overall, level 2 is pretty self-explanatory, so just grind it out until you can get 80% or more on this pack. Once you can get 80%, you're ready to move on to level 3. Level 3 is high aerials. This is where you can really take your aerial game up a notch, because what separates a lot of diamond and champ players is not only their ability to reach the ball when it's up by the ceiling, but also their ability to reach it up there fast. The thing about aerials is people don't just stop whiffing them at higher ranks. Whiffs on aerials still happen multiple times a game, even at Grand Champion. Although most diamonds and Grand Champions are capable of reaching the same aerials, it comes down to who reaches them faster. The whole reason why whiffs still happen at Grand Champion is because they're pushing themselves to get up to it way faster. If a GC tried to go up for an aerial as slow as a diamond player does, they probably wouldn't have any whiffs all game. So my point in saying all this is that whiffs are inevitable. So if you want to improve your aerials, don't just practice hitting the ball over and over again in the air. Practice hitting it as early and as fast as possible. So in this pack, what that means is hold down boost almost the entire time while doing the aerial. If you're feathering your boost, you're doing it wrong. In a real game, whether you're going to hit it or not doesn't matter if you get beat to it anyway. So if you're going to go for it, go for it fast. For the shots in this pack, you might even notice that some of them are easier if you air roll your car a little bit at the end. That's a good thing to experiment with. It's often easier to get power on the ball if you hit it with the top side of your nose rather than the underside. So if you need to air roll for some of these to make it happen, I'd encourage trying it out. Just remember that you shouldn't be spinning the whole time as you're taking off. The simpler you do it now, the easier it will be later on. Once you can get 80% on this pack or more, you're ready to move on to the next level. This is one of the most important aspects of aerials to master. If you're going for a shot from a tough angle and there's someone in net ready to save it, sure it may be an easy save for them since it's a pretty small angle to cover, but the fact that they do have to save it is huge when it comes to breaking down the defense. On top of that, sometimes the defender just won't have faith that you can score it from that tough angle, so they won't jump for the save at all. If you can put a shot on net from these tough angles every single time, you'll find yourself with way more opportunities to score even if they do get saved. If you haven't been practicing using air roll on your aerials yet, you definitely need to now. Most of these shots are pretty much impossible to score with power if you don't use air roll. A common mistake with these types of shots is waiting for the ball to come to an easier angle to score from. Again, just like before, if you're gonna go up for it, go for it fast. Even if you do miss the angle on the shot, it's still better that you hit the ball rather than just getting beat to it by the opponent. You should be holding down boost almost the entire time during your aerial. And of course, just like before, make sure you're not holding air roll the entire time. A good habit to get into is using air roll on both sides. For most players, there's one dominant air roll direction that we like to use more often than the other. For me personally, I'm much more comfortable with air roll right than air roll left, so when I'm practicing, I'll often find myself spinning the long way around to hit the ball correctly just because I'm more comfortable with it. Clearly, this is a short-term solution. In the long term, it's much better for me to be comfortable with air roll in both directions. So I'd recommend being careful about that when you first start. Make sure you're air rolling according to what makes sense for the given aerial, not just what you're most comfortable with. If you can get 80% or more on this pack, you're ready to move on to level 5. Sudden aerials are, in my opinion, the most important aspect of aerials to master at a high Grand Champ or Supersonic Legend level. For most of us up in this area of ranks, it's hard to pinpoint a particular mechanic that we can improve the most. It feels like we're decent at everything because we have to be in order to get here in the first place. But with this training pack in particular, your mind will be blown by how much faster you could be on aerials. I first made this training pack a long time ago for this video, which some of you may have seen, but it turns out to be exactly what I would recommend for level 5 in mastering your aerials. For this pack, you need to make sure you're following these exact rules in order for it to serve its purpose. Number 1. On each shot, start by turning off ball cam to see which boost pad you're lined up with. You'll be perfectly lined up with it. I didn't make any mistakes when making this pack. So, for example, this is not the mini pad you're lined up with. It's actually this one, even though it's further away. The first rule is that you need to drive directly at that boost pad before turning toward the ball. 
Once you touch that boost pad, then you can jump or turn or whatever you want. Number two, your first touch on the ball must be on or before that last beep on the counter in the top left. So turn your sound up if you need and listen to what comes first, your touch on the ball or the last beep of the counter. Keep in mind that the last beep actually happens when it's transitioning from two seconds to one second, not one to zero. If you follow both these rules on every shot for this pack, it should force you to be as efficient as possible with every single aerial. Your power slide, your double jump, the angle of your touch on the ball all need to be perfect in order to follow these rules and still score it. It'll really expose how far you really are from perfecting your aerials. In high level games, it happens often that you need to react and jump for an aerial from an awkward spot. Those situations are where aerials are usually furthest from being perfected, and this pack will help you perfect them better than any other if you follow those two rules. If you can get 100% on this pack by scoring all of them on the first try, I uh... I, I don't even know what to say to you because I can't even do that. If you actually can score all of these on the first try while following those two rules, then props to you because you've got the aerial mechanics of a professional. All the training pack codes will be in the description. I recommend trying them out to see which level you're currently at and then working your way up from there. Also, remember to check out my course and use code WAITIN through the link in the description for 20% off. If you enjoyed and learned something, please consider subscribing for more content like this. It really does help me out and it literally only takes a second, so I'd appreciate it. If you want to learn how to air dribble from a complete beginner level all the way to advanced, that video will be on the end screen here in a few seconds. Other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you later.